ik kom in one night en toen was het on the notes about en hij was a sign like saying about it. When we first looked at it, we thought it was like something like the QE2 or something like that. We thought it was like a pleasure cruise. <laughs> Well, my friends think really that it's just a bit of a sky, actually, and going off for a fortnight at the end of term, and they seem pretty. Well, some of them think it's a bit of a jit, really, that I can get away. Two six. Hey! Two six. Hey! Come on, lads, put some beef in. One more. Come on. Two six. Hey! Right. Well, I've been at Bolton School now for about six years. I came after primary school at 11. I'm now in my sixth year. I did my O-levels last year, and uh, this year I'm studying geography, economics, and French. Just take it through to the end of the sentence, then, Bruce, as well. Mais ceci était à l'ouvre tous les deux. Grace, now. For what you are about to receive, may we be truly thankful. Amen. When my father came here and my uncle, two uncles in fact, and an auntie, so I was following a bit of a tradition in coming. I hope I don't get seasick, I, I really do, but I don't really think I can say really, as I've not really done much sailing or anything, so I'll just have to wait. That might spoil it a bit, but it should be a very good experience. So once in a lifetime chance, so I'm really glad I can take it. on a scheme, no one at left school, just went straight onto a scheme, working here, <laughs> and then uh, went to the butchers. I worked here, I built the extension on the building. I worked here for about five months, then I was a Victoria something. enjoys every minute of it. I, I'm not a sailor myself, but uh, I'm almost tempted to go along as well as a stowaway. <laughs> All I hope is he has a calm voyage. <laughs> His only worry is seasickness. Right, thank you. Follow me, we shall go that way. Okay, we'll do. Down onto the half deck. Right. Do you come straight down or what? We have to go to London, and then from London we got, um, what was it, the eight o'clock train? Eight o'clock, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll be sleeping out. No, I didn't. She slept a little bit. You're, you're three. You've got a hammock, have you? You're lucky. <laughs> hey, hammock, 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 so, hammocks are nice. And you this like a banana. <laughs> this ties on your side of your bed. If you lift your mattress up, you'll see two ties on the side of your bed. And you want to put them on where it's safe. Because otherwise, if, if you change tack at night, and you're in your, in your pits, that's changing from one side to the other, you roll out. Half and right. I'll take your passport, please. Welcome, Ward. Welcome, Hedy. Welcome, Ward. I'll take your passport, please. Okay. And how much money do you have there? 66. 66 pounds. Okay. And what else do I have to hand you? Two rings. Three rings. Okay. Two rings. Okay,
Yeah. And how did you hear about the schooners? He has a trip with your club, yeah, uh, Shrewsbury House. Yeah. New club. Okay. You were on any sailing before? No. No? Well, I'm not very much either, but it should be all right. Right, OK, if we can have the watch leader, he can climb the rigging first, and the rest of the trainees will follow suit. Your hands go on to the shroud. That's the sort of vertical pieces. You never hold on to the ratlins. If one of those ratlins gives way, well, you sort of go swimming. When you get up there, or when you're out on the bowsprit, you always clip round something horizontal, never anything vertical. If you clip onto something vertical, you get a beautiful guided descent. We're all standing on the deck, sort of clapping. Oh, that was a good one. Right, OK? <laughs> It's pretty frightening. It's worse having to keep stopping. It's petrifying when you've got to stop up the top there, waiting for someone else. Get in and down out of the crow's nest, it's worse. Because there's nothing to hold on to. You've got to find everything. It should be quite good when the boat's moving, though. that would be more fun. Right, gentlemen. Sit down. Well, welcome on board. Officially. En masse. Um, briefly, I'm going to tell you what we're going to try and do the next fortnight. We are here, present time in Southampton. At the moment, this is the weather maps that we've been getting through. And for the next 48 hours, 72 hours, unfortunately, it doesn't look as though there's going to be very much wind. The idea, really, is to get round this corner. That's what we're going to try and do and get back down into the Bay of Biscay, down here. But we'll come out tomorrow and hopefully come round, get out into the English Channel, and then head towards the west. You're in, although you might not appreciate it when you're being seasick, leaning over the lee rail. A fairly streamlined, beautiful machine. But what you might say the red rum or the Pele or the Ian Botham of the sailing world. Please treat Malcolm Miller as your home and look after her. It's a very expensive bit of kit to maintain. A mizzen sail, which you'll be seeing later, just having a new one made now, costs some £8,000. OK, finally, my job is to help you. That's what we, the permanent crew, are paid for. The more assistance, information we can give to you, the better we'll be pleased. Come up. If you say to watch leader, say, come up. That's a sort of signal or the order that is given when everybody that's hauling on the rope lets go of the rope except the front man. And he is the person who is going to make it up to the cleat or the belaying pin. OK? And there's five jobs on the bridge. You're either on the wheel, number six. There's two lookouts, one either side. There's a messenger, and there's someone who maintains the log and everything else. Okay. Good. Right. That's it. All right. Take it off and do it again. You did it right. Now let's see if we can do it again. Over. Under. Right, now, three figures of eight. That's it. Right, that's it. Now we start your coiling. So, where you do it? Left hand by the pen. Right hand about there. How big do you make the coils? Depends how long the rope is. A little bit of rope, little coil. Big bit of rope like that, nice big coil. Uh, oh, four or five, sir. Now. You're at the 15, don't you? I thought, I thought you meant add, add 5 no. on to what you already had. If you're on 10 degrees and the order comes 4 to 5, then you take it back to 5. Oh, if he wants to take it to 15, he'll shout to you, go to 15. <coughs> There's one in there. What about taking the eye? Uh, we'll support 5, sir. 5 degrees of 4 feet on, sir. 5 degrees of 4 feet on, sir. Right, starboard 10. <laughs> starboard 10, sir. <laughs> Now you see what I mean about uh, knitting. If you got given that lot in a hurry to do something with, you are stuck. Can I to crowd round and have a look at this card? Now, you just remember one thing and one thing only about steering by compass, and I don't care any, about any theories that you have, you just remember this one thing. There's magnets in that bowl and that little bit there, and they do not move. Just remember that. It's the ship, it's pinnacle, the mast, the whole ship. It moves round the compass. That compass, the magnets point in that direction north. All right? And they stay north. Should I have took okay, that off? Set up the mizzen running back today. Pull this back on. Use your body weight. Put it on there. 
So all get on the same side. They get a full of supper, which they've enjoyed tremendously. They're all going to pull away hard, and what's going to happen? They're all going to fall flat in their backs, aren't they? Because there's not much wind in it, and they're all pulling hard. Who's doing this running back stay with this one? It's full of them. Come on! You want another one up here? Right. Vast heaving. You ever heard of these people called two and six? You'll be hearing of ad nauseam in the next fortnight. The way we do it is two, six, heave. 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 Right, hand the energy. Where you go? Pull it away. Easy. Beautiful. In two weeks, you can see a change, one hopes for the better, in a lot of these lads that we have. One of the joys, I think, is that you get people from all walks of life. I always quote the cruise where we had two from Buckingham Palace and two from Borstal. Five minutes after they were on board and we put them in smocks, you couldn't tell which was which. You're going to get some people who are very intelligent. You're going to get some people who are thick. Um, the thicker ones will learn something perhaps from the intelligent ones and vice versa. We get people from Borstal and they might be sleeping above a police cadet. It's all part of the game. We don't try and segregate them. We have no choice in what we get. They come for the fortnight. Once they're in the smock, they're all the same. Come on! Get yourself! Put another life jacket and go! Right, that is the alarm bell, which you all heard. There is no other bell like it on board. If you hear those bells go again, it is for real. We only do this once, so you get up there quick. I stepped upon the schooner all oh, yesterday. Take off all but two sail ties. Well, I stepped upon the schooner only yesterday. They took me in the Solent and they let me play. Thank you. They had these bits of canvas, some were big, some were small. And the chief officer said, we got to hoist them all. No sooner they were up, they were down, what a fool. We sailed away with the sun in the west, I think. That's negative, we're just leaving the dock. But I was a galley rat. My head was stuck over the sink. <laughs> I didn't care what was going on. For the food, it stinks. <laughs> I got the Malcolm Dealer, Malcolm Dealer, Malcolm Dealer Blue. And that went fine. There were no problems. Having said that, you can see the problems, like that sail got caught around the boom. So if all of you, as well as you watch leaders, always keep an eye open, and if you see a, sh a snag, shout, stop, fast heaving, whatever you like, make sure, because otherwise the sail gets ripped and they're about 2,000 pounds a time. Did you all understand what you were doing? By the time you've done the second one, anyway. Okay, you're not watching deck, are you? You are, right. Apart from the bridge crew, nip the others down, quick cup of tea, and then swap them over. Half the purpose of um, being on a sailing ship is to put the boys into a dangerous situation. That's all part and parcel of the game. They're going to go aloft in rough weather because they have to. They man the ship, they do the work. There's no way we can get around it. You have to worry about them when they go aloft. But at the same time, you have one great thing is that they are scared, so they will hang on that tighter. But you need the element of fear and achievement. And both sometimes come together. And that's what we try to achieve here. We try very hard to hack a sense of safety into them. I'm forever at them to have an eye for themselves, an eye for the ship, a hand for themselves, a hand for the ship. We do go at them all the time. We're continually at them about safety. And again, it's quite surprising. You can see how much more interest they're taking in their own self-preservation and looking after other people, not just letting something go, but having a good look around to make sure that before they let that go, somebody else isn't going to get hurt. I've got this thing about heights. There's only one way to get over it, and that's to go up there. It's the only thing you can do, just go up there. I wasn't looking forward to it. When we first got on board, we had to go out there. 
I didn't want to do it, but once we've done it a couple of times, you just crawl out there, don't think about it. Quite enjoy it now, actually. I'm scared of heights, but I've no fear of going up just when I'm up there. Pretty shaky up there. I've only ever been out there once, and uh, I won't go out there again. We have to keep this ship tidy for obvious reasons. It's quite nice to half take at the moment. We had this weekend when we got a lot of engineering done, a lot of work, and the upper deck's a mess. It's covered in oil and grease and dirt. And we're trying to get that up, and because we haven't had a happy hour down here for a week, the inside of the ship is as well. The way I like to play this, I'll tell you all where you're going in a minute. We normally do it for an hour. If you're finished in half an hour and I'm happy, you can have the other half hour sitting on the stern smoking or whatever you'd like to do. If it takes you an hour and a half, that's up to you. Happy hour, which is probably a misnomer if ever there was one, is a cleaning routine whereby everybody has a position which he goes to at nine o'clock every day for an hour and spends an hour cleaning that part of the ship. We attach tremendous importance to this because with 55 people living in close company, if it starts to get dirty, we end up looking like a pigsty very quickly indeed. We teach them really how to be a housewife. We scrub decks and we show them how to do it properly. And it's all a bit of a nausea. The funny thing about it is that they really quite enjoy doing it. There's a, a definite sense of achievement by the end of the week where they can see that an area that they have been cleaning has come up considerably from what it was at the beginning of the week. In the mornings, during a happy hour, if anybody's bed is not made up, their bedding is hoisted to the top of the mast until they get the idea to make their bed up. Well, that's where I'm going. Who's is that? It's the cooks. <laughs> Not me, got told to do it. How's your head, Mr. Wright? 212, sir. Thank you. T, two, T. The biggest two, trouble we have on board is seasickness. It, to a great extent, can affect the enjoyment that a person gets out of the cruise. I've been sick 17 times in one day. The main thing is not to let it get you down. Once you start being sick, just get hold of a rope and start pulling it and you don't feel it not so much. You know, when you're seasick, you're over the side and you can see no end to it whatsoever. It just tastes revolting. <laughs> I've only ever been sick straight after a meal or anything like that. It comes up semi-digested, you know, pretty foul. There are a lot of boys and it shows out in their character. You get a boy working in the galley, like we had this trip. And he was working in the galley, being seasick, going back in the galley and carrying on. And that's, that shows all the guts. Um, we haven't had much wind yet. Those of you that have been seasick, you will probably find you're cured. There are usually about two that suffer throughout the fortnight. The rest of you will probably find you're over it now. We're trying to get a quick start on that, if you can, as we're going in. A quick up one. Inboard by that back there. Yeah, move out of it, sir. Half a stand port. Half a stand port on. We'll meet you, sir. Hard a starboard. We made Jersey one sunny afternoon. Thank you, Peter. And for 24 hours, Ready? I called the tune. Well, I liked Jersey, but we left too soon. We come here quite a lot. We have no problems with drunkenness, and I hope, please, that you will not let us down. If you do get drunk, you have just volunteered to be duty in the next port, so it's up to you. Ditto of your late bank. However, I'm sure we won't have any problems. We made Jersey one sunny afternoon. And for 24 hours, I called the tune. Well, I liked Jersey, but we left too soon. The time that was written down for you coming back on board comes from the ship's clock. Was it written down at 11.10? It was. It was. Wait a minute, um, 
Oh, if you can prove that to the first officer tomorrow morning, by all means do so. You have and what's permission. he going to say? I do not know what he is going to say. Good afternoon, gentlemen. What time you going to be back on board? Oh, we've had the pub. A bit late, like. Your behaviour was very good, with possibly two exceptions, but those two exceptions will live on film for 40 years, so you will be able to see yourselves performing for 40 years, which is probably punishment in itself. <laughs> we were, however, all back on time, and thank you very much, because I know the temptations of cheap liquor will lie you. coming up so we took the four course up in his gear hanging on the railway yard and the bosun was there we had a crowd of us volunteers to go up aloft to try and stow the sail before the squall came uh, we went up the bosun got out about two yards under the lower yard on the port side i was up just behind him we strapped ourselves on the others were halfway up the shrouds and then just right there the wind sort of hit and the ship went right over to about i don't know what, 45 degrees something like that and of course all the sails started flapping and banging and crashing about Oh, I think that's probably the most exhilarating experience I've ever had in my life, I think. It's going up the rigging on the side and it just tipped the boat right over. It's halfway up. But it didn't feel like I was there. It felt like I was just watching it from, you know, somewhere else. It was excellent. Well done. Stand by. Stand by. Stand by. Stand by. Stand I was just about to climb into the crow's nest, so I just had to hang on for grim death and clip onto the ratlins up there. It's not an experience I'd like to have to go through again. Well, it's 
sent me to sea and the wind began to blow. They said it was for Saints, but I wouldn't know. Cause I was stuck in my bunk way down below. We had to get up at uh, midnight today, midnight till four, and that's a bit of a pain, you know. It seems, you no know, sooner have you got down for a bit of kip, you're there, all of a sudden, there's man, what's on deck? You know, and you're off. Got it? Anybody there? Anybody know what reef that's for? Yeah. 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 Right, that's why it's got that name. If you reach over to the opposite side of the boom and stop admiring the scenery, I didn't think the hours would be like there was. I didn't know you'd be working from 12 until 4 every, well, every other night. The past three or four days I've had about three, three hours of sleep every night. And you, you're falling asleep as you're walking. You can't keep up. The only thing that I disliked was having to get up at sort of four o'clock in the morning. The early morning watches. But I mean, the ship's got to be looked after 24 hours a day, so it's got to be done, and it's part of the cruise. This is what the sponsors pay for. Get up. Come on. Don't you get up. Here's some watch. Come on. Everybody up. We're <coughs> better if we could do that. Don't talk about it. last very long but it was quite exciting whilst we had it wasn't it congratulations to all those of you that took part there was a few things happened very quickly and a lot of people were pulling very hard on ropes and really digging out and it went very well really um, by the time we got them all down it was time to put them up again because there's only 10 knots of wind left that's the way it goes you get these vicious line calls coming through sometimes and that's exactly what happened about 15 knots, 50 degree shift in wind. As you saw, we had been running with the square saws and suddenly there it was, right at us. So, it all went all right. We've unfortunately split the jib topsail, which when you all go ashore in Roscoff, I'll be sitting down repairing, but hopefully we'll get that mended. Apart from that, no damage that I know of. Is that the mizzen running back, Steve? Brace the out! Fifteen foot on, sir. Yeah. Let draw, fire on! Right. Starboard twenty. Oh, sorry, sir. How's your head? One zero zero, sir. Stand by attack! Set up four. Okay, make it up with that. Yeah, one three zero. Three zero three zero, sir. Take a deep breath. Oh, here we go. Six. Eight. 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 That's right, roll them in. Good. Eight. 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 Jim, come on! Well done. Jump on the other jib. Jump on the other jib. Get it on. Get it on. Get it on. Now, otherwise you lose it. That's a lot better. That's two feet. He's another two feet. I don't know. Who clean these steps, Mr. Evans? Me, sir. You, sir. What's that, sir? Dirt, sir. It won't be there tomorrow, will it, sir? No, sir. 
It's a lot more, a lot more strict than I expected. But I think that you need that sort of discipline to keep this chip in order at all. You get right in here. Look at this lot. It's a garbage. A lot more love and attention. All right. Forty-five people using these. Please live up in the locker. What is that? <laughs> hey? No, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It wouldn't fit you at all, would it? You have to be disciplined last to some crew. extent, otherwise you get people being thrown overboard, you know. Girls here, last crew. I mean, they sort of run it, sort of half military style. I think that's a good thing, really. Right, where's this cook's mate? Quite a responsibility, isn't it? I mean, 39 people have never been shipped before. It's quite a responsibility for the captain, I suppose, now, to keep discipline, make sure the thing sells properly. Come on up. The half deck and the PLS combination down aft. It's both very good. Best I've seen for a while. The galley need a lot more work, though. They'll get a bit more stick this afternoon, and we'll get it looking beautiful, just like Mum's kitchen. Right, the gap tops tools, away you go. The gap tops. We have a Yeah, let go on the bank. Yeah, yeah. Look at that out. Ah, you fool. Pull it back in. Come on. Oh, my gap's not out. Right, one of the other Get one person up. Okay. Here we go. All get on it. Two six. Good job. Two six. Go on, gentlemen. You've got your porridge. Let's get some. Well done. Right. As soon as you can. We've got one job. Take off that. There's a way of doing that. Give it to me. Push. No, that's right. Man the yards, man the main shouts. Nice and even, working your time for the ball fire The trainees man the yards, which is always very evocative for them. Uh, in fact, talking to two or three of them just the other day, it was the highlight of the whole trip for them going up the yards in the first time they did it. Hey, Jeff. Thank you. Boys get a sense of achievement, and occasionally it happened about four or five trips ago. We got a lad came down from the yards, and I overheard him say to his watch officer, Sometimes it makes you proud you're British. During this trip, we've met up with the Churchill on three occasions. And like everything else, you always try and make your ship the better ship. You try and be proud of it. For instance, we went in St. Malo. The boys were up the yards, manned, looking very smart. And we, by chance, hadn't happened to have a bugler on board. And he played the trumpet as we came in, which must have been quite spectacular for them. What we're trying to do, I don't believe, is institute a rivalry, but to try and get a sense of pride in one's own ship. And obviously you do that by trying, I won't say to be better, but trying to do things as well as you possibly can so that you can give them a, a feeling of achievement. It's, again, getting back to the business of working as a team. Going into San Marlo, that was good. It's quaint, nice little place. Hey, it's just one five franc piece. What does tea raise? 
criteria is to pull it. Put it Open in. It. Pull it. No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. That is all right as well. It's a nice, very nice port, but it was more expensive than Britain, I thought. I wish we could spend a full day ashore without coming back for meals. There wasn't enough time in any place, really. We was only there for a day at the most, in any place. <laughs> really, it is a, a sailing training thing, more than, you know, a port visit thing. And as I said, it, was, it is a bonus going into a port, and we did appreciate it. What time have we got to be back for, haven't we? It's not that bad, really. It's a good thing to do, working in groups and getting to know people. It's a really good thing. You're busy working all the time and you're working hard and you're working for a purpose. You're working to get to somewhere um, and it's exciting. Terrible. <laughs> Hating every minute of it. Two, six, e. Two, six, e. I think I had a slightly romantic view of it all, you know, a big ship going through the water and the guy on the way. But you don't realise the amount of work that goes on with it, all the cleaning, constant cleaning, up and down with the sails all the time. I think if you don't like sailing, then you're not going to enjoy it, really. Four, six, three. All right, I'll make it up. Put it, turn it around the pin. Right, take it up and heave it, put it around the windlass. You want to keep it this side. The other side of that, you've got too much weight on the boat. On the starboard side of the cap, so I'll make it past that side. Hold it there. Hey! Hold it there. Great, magic. Really enjoy myself. I think it's been marvellous. I've been enjoying the squalls all the time. I think it's great. Okay. Basically, it's been pretty good. It's an experience I wouldn't miss. So that's our 1500 position. This is our course we've steered then along here, you see. There. That should confirm the course. Who's on the helm now? Oh, you see. Well, the well, sea well, right? What were you steering? Do you remember? Uh, zero five out. Zero five out. Uh, 
You always make friends quick. If you have to live together, I think we've got to know each other in a short period. Difficult, I suppose, really. I mean, when you're trying to battle with everybody else's boots and jeans and oilies and everything else like that. But uh, there's been no uh, no real friction between anybody. Who said it? Who's... I don't know who it was. It wasn't too bad, actually. I thought it'd be very crowded, but um, the way the watches are worked, it means that you've really only got two watches down there at a time, so it's not too bad. Well, when you're having your dinner and you see it, sometimes can get a bit hectic, and all, especially if the sea's pretty rough. I think we could have a little more room, I think. Um... But I wouldn't mind one of the cabins that the uh, phone officers have got. You know, they're quite nice, but... <laughs> Probably one of the most difficult jobs on board is the cooks. He's in a confined space. He's cooking for 55 people, and he's doing an angle sometimes of 30 to 35 degrees, which is not an easy job at all. Coupled with this, each trainee does a day in the galley. So he's got to retrain them in that 24 hours, and it must be very frustrating to get a different lot and they've got to tell them where to put the spoons, where to put the knives, where to put the forks, where the plates go, hang on to the rail, one hand for himself and one hand for the food he's just about to drop on somebody. It must be very difficult. As you may or may not know, Prince Charles and Lady Diana had a baby this morning sometime. Uh, we've decided we ought to have a drink and celebrate it. So if you all like to join us with a beer, and we'll drink to their health and the baby's health. Just drop it on me and wait. No, second. Good Good well, wait, I've got one. Right, gentlemen. Prince Charles, Princess Diana, Princess of Wales, and the new baby. New baby. Hooray! 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 I think Bruce has been pretty even all, all the way through. He hasn't seemed to change all that much. He's been very cheerful all the way through, but he seems to have been the same person. He hasn't, not a, no, a really notable change like some of them have got, but he's been a very, very good worker, the watch. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. What was that? Mickey had problems to start with. Um, he had a bit of a, he had a couple of bad days, but we had to talk to him, sort of things out, and since then he's he's gone on from strength to strength. He's been a marvellous asset to the group and the team, and he's been brilliant in the end. He, he had no fear of working up the rigging or anything. He's, he's been a very good worker in the team. Just lean over here, bring the mucks here. Healy, to me, seems that he's the one who got a lot of it. He's very quiet initially and he's come out of his shell. He's, he's a big, strong lad, but I think it's the large thing. He's just scared of showing his strength. On the ship, he, he slowly built up in self-confidence. Wright was what I would probably call a mother's boy um, to a certain extent, and he has got more self-confidence in himself. He's been able to cope with the heels of this world, really, who comes from a completely different background. Um, Hesketh, a bit difficult. Um, he's obviously got better during the course of the trip. By better, I mean he's got more confidence in himself. And there's definitely a marked di difference between when he signed on and when he signed off. He! Two! I think he's come out of himself an awful lot more during the last week. Uh, he started off fairly deserved. He wasn't too sure what was going on. Um, he's now beginning to get himself into the group and working with everybody else. He's working in the group under pressure an awful lot better by the middle of the first week. I think he's enjoyed himself and he's, I think basically he's just got a little bit more self-confidence. Across the channel 
and I'm just off of Wales. But they told me whales were fish, so they could stay in the sea, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going home on Friday. Thank the Lord. Well, I'm going home on Friday, and I thank the Lord. But one last little gesture, I'd like to thank all on board. What are they saying? What are they saying, anyway? Hello? Hello! sense of adventure really I think it's to it really does bring, bring people out of themselves you get people to come on here maybe never been away from home before like mammy's boys you know very wet behind the ears scared to do this scared to do that and they really come out of themselves on this they find them living amongst a group of people from all walks of life from all backgrounds all sorts of anti-social habits between all of them and uh, you really have to learn to live with people not a cruise, as in cruise number whatever it is. It's a, uh, it's a little more than that. I think if you, you, you get, you get out what you put in, really. If you put in a lot, you'll get a lot more out of it than if you just sort of wander around and try and be avoided when doing things like steering or going up the rigging, things like that. First week was last. Second week hasn't been too bad. It's all right for a laugh. You have a good laugh. I wouldn't come again on it. Why? I didn't think it'd be nothing like this. Like what we've done over the last few weeks, like pulling ropes and all that, getting up out of bed, <laughs> things like that. I think you've learned anything out of it. Plenty of few things, like, but I don't think there'd be any use to me because I'm not coming on it again. <laughs> I think Mick doesn't like it. He says said he doesn't like it, but I think if he got the chance to come back again, I think he would come back again. Within a couple of weeks when they've been at home, they're going to look back on the cruise as, as an enjoy, enjoyable part of their life, something they'll probably never forget. You joined the ship a couple of weeks ago. You didn't know each other. You didn't know us. You wondered what the hell was going on. You had no idea. In these two weeks, you've gone 758 miles. You did it. Nobody else. We couldn't have got there without you. You worked together as a team, initially as watches, then as a the ship's company. There's no way you could have done it by yourself. You did it as a team. Think about it. Come on, old bum! 